52 past the hour. Statistics show that the world needs 600 million jobs by 2025 to employ the eligible workforce. How can entrepreneurs help meet that goal? and close the gender gap in the process? That's the bigger question. Joining us now, entrepreneur in residence at Dell and chair emeritus of the UN Foundation's Global Entrepreneurs Council, Elizabeth Gore. That's quite a title and also quite a goal, especially with the focus on women. Tell us about it. Sure, well, as you said, needing 600 million jobs, I can't think of anything better for the economy than spurring entrepreneurs and helping them scale. And I have a fundamental belief that entrepreneurs are actually going to save people's lives. Yeah. They're disrupting technologies. They are bringing um, new jobs to the workforce. And then women particularly put 90% of their income back into their communities. So if that's not a scalable goal, I don't know what it is. What's the focus and the challenge of, of, of finding and helping lift up women entrepreneurs? Well, women need access to capital. Even in the United States, That's they're only getting 7% of founders are women that get venture capital. So what we're trying to do is pass legislation globally through mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs Unite mm -hmm. that will give them that. But just to play devil's advocate, couldn't sure. somebody look at that and say, well, the men's companies must just be farther along, they're more worthy of the funding, that's why they're able to get their hands well, on it. Statistics mm -hmm. actually show that women-owned countries are scaling faster than men's. They're better fiduciary agents, but we just have to get them in front of funders who believe in what they're doing mm. so I mean there's so many venture capitals out venture capitalists out there throwing money at all sorts of new startups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what are the principal issues that that allow only seven percent of the women's based companies to get venture capital funding what what happens in the interview process well here in the United mm -hmm. States I mean we look at there is an old formula that is used and it's been quite successful I mean the venture community has made a lot of money but it, it is time now to change that formula if you look at crowdsourcing funding 64 percent are women-owned business so the public is even in front of them. So we just have to educate and change the mindset. And globally... Of the, the woman or the venture capitalists? Both. Yes. Both. Both. The venture capitalists, but I think women are now really raising their hands and stepping mm -hmm. up and getting forward. But we have to make sure they have the opportunities. So this isn't just that old thing of women don't have the confidence no, to go in and ask anymore. for what they want. Not like, they've anymore. got the confidence they're going in, and then well, they're getting shut down. I think they have the confidence, but I still don't think they ask for enough. Mm -hmm. I, th I still think they undersell themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it may not be come to the table. Of the challenge to get to the table, but now we've got to be able to think big. Well, that's what we're trying to do is let's create a movement. Let's help yeah. entrepreneurs, male or female, advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. Which industries do you see making the biggest changes here? Who's really doing right by women? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think the tech industry needs to do more, and so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, between Dell and Intel Capital, we're putting out a lot of support for women through networks, access to capital, talent, technology, and then globally, we need to really look at this. The day we start a website, we're global company. So we need to ensure that this policy is passed, Sustainable Development Goal 8 at the UN through Entrepreneurs Unite to make sure every woman gets access to capital. Elizabeth Gore, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. And that does it for us this morning, The Rundown.